We're going to be talking about sigma notation, that's summation notation. This is lesson 14.1d. And that symbol is the Greek letter sigma. And we're going to use it for sum. If you haven't seen the three previous videos, you can just click on the description in case you get lost or confused. So this Greek letter right here is a sigma. And it can be used to simplify notation when a series has a formula for the general term, you know, that nth term. Here we have a series 3, or a sequence, I should say. We have 3, 5, 7, 9, and we find our nth term with 2n plus 1. And the sum of the first four terms of this sequence can be shown as this. This would be the notation. We use our sigma. We put a 4 up here because we're doing the first four terms. And this is the nth term, and we're going to go from 1 to 4, see? And the sum, as n goes from 1 to 4, of the quantity 2n plus 1. That's how we would read it. Or we could spin it around a little bit and say the sum of the quantity 2n plus 1 as n goes from 1 to 4. Okay? And we can write sigma notation for a sum. We have 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. These are the first four odd numbers, aren't they? And the general term, you know, that nth term, that's what general term is, for an odd number is 2n minus 1. So our sigma notation is, we have our sigma, it's the first four odd terms, so we have a 4 up here. We're going from n equals 1 to 4, and we have 2n minus 1. See? That's for the odd numbers. We read this as the sum of the quantity of 2n minus 1 as n goes from 1 to 4. Look at this, we have a minus, plus, minus. So this is the sum of the first four odd numbers, but with alternating signs. So to make this pattern, we multiply each term by negative one to the nth plus one. So because we have the first four odd numbers and we have alternating signs, we need to use this for the alternating signs, and we need to use this for the odd numbers. So our sigma notation ends up becoming a sigma sign with a 4 up here, because it's the first four odd numbers, and n equals 1, we're going from 1 to 4. This is for our alternating signs, see? And this is for the odd numbers, see? So that's how we would write the sigma notation. Here we have 3 plus 9 plus 27 plus 81 plus and so on. These are the powers of 3. And this ellipsis here tells us it's unending or an infinite series. So we're going to use an infinity symbol up on the top of the sigma to show we're adding all the terms in a sequence going on forever. And n is going to equal 1. And we have our nth term, our general term, would be 3 to the nth. We'd read this as the sum of the quantity of 3 to the nth as n goes from 1 to infinity. And this would equal 3 to the first power plus 3 to the second power plus 3 to the third power and so on. See? We'd add it forever, going on and on and on. We'd just do 3 to the fifth, 3 to the sixth. Okay? We can find the sum of this. Here we've got five terms. We're going to be starting with the first one, with 1 here. So we're going to put a 1 where the n is, then a 2, then a 3, then a 4, then a 5. We have 1 times 1, which is 1 minus 2. So we have a negative 1. We have a 4 minus 2. We have a, a 9 minus 2, a 16 minus 2, a 25 minus 2. We do our math, and we get a 45. See? Now notice that these are in parentheses. Watch out for parentheses, because if there's no parentheses, then we could say it means this. We're going to do the minus 3 at the end. So what we're going to do is we're going to go for the, we got three terms here, starting with 1. We're going to use 2n as our general term, so we have 2 times 1 plus 2 times 2 plus 2 times 3, and then we subtract the 3. See? Because there's no parentheses. That means we have a 2 plus a 4 plus a 6 minus 3. That means we have a 12 minus 3. It means we have a 9. But if there are parentheses, 
See how this looks with the minus 3 at the end? If there are parentheses, then that means we're doing 2 times 1 minus 3 plus 2 times 2 minus 3 plus 2 times 3 minus 3. That's going to give us a 2 minus 3, which is a negative 1, and a 4 minus 3, which is a 1, and a 6 minus 3, which is a 3. We add these up together, we get a 3. Do you see the difference? Let me back up a little bit so you can see. So watch out for parentheses, okay? If they're supposed to be there, put them there, okay? Now here's some more examples. We've got some fractions here. We've got six terms, and our general rule is the quotient of 1 and 2n plus 1. We can just put a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here. And 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, so we have 1 third, don't we? 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, so we have 1 fifth, see? We have to find a common denominator to add those, don't we? We end up with this big, huge fraction. We can even do it with radicals. We're going to have seven terms. We're going to start with four. Here's our general term. So we're going to put a four, a five, a six, a seven in here. So two times four is eight minus one is a seven. We have the square root of seven. Square root of nine. Square root of 11. Square root of 13. That can be a three, can't it? So we can just write it like this. We don't need to write exactly what the square root of 7 is approximately, okay? You can just write it like that. We can even do it with logarithms. We've got our general term as log n. We're going to have 10. We're going to start at 7, so we have log 7 plus log 8 plus log 9 plus log 10. That means we do log the times the, the we do the 7 times the 8 times the 9 times the 10. That's like a 56 times a 90, isn't it? So we get log 5040. See that? We can do it with pi. We're going to have four terms starting with 0. We go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We don't need the 0, right? We can ignore him. So we just have a pi because it's just one of them. Then we have 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. When we add these up, we get 10 pi. See? All right? So those are just some extra examples, all right? I don't know if you're going to be dealing with anything like this in Algebra 2. You might, all right? So our next lesson is 14.2a, and we're going to talk about arithmetic sequences. And we're going to be finding a first term and a common difference. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, hit the like button for me so I know. It's the only way I can tell. And I hope you have a great day. I hope you're doing well. I'll see you next time. Bye.